Welcome back everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Now, it's the holidays, whatever holiday you celebrate, Christmas, whichever. I know everyone's probably already tired of turkey, so here's an alternative. This is Eye of Round Roast. This is four and a half pounds. I bought this at H-E-B for $9 and some change. And it's gonna be delicious. As you can see, it's already twined up with our rope here. Now, I will do later videos about twining and why you do that. But if you don't know how to do it at all, or if you do, you can buy it at the grocery store. If not, you can tell the butcher to twine it for you. Or like in this package, it was already done. Now, the reason to do this is one, it helps hold in moisture while it bakes or roasts in the oven. Another thing, it helps keep it form. So whenever you cut into it, when you're ready to eat, you still have round circles and it's not all weirdly shaped and stuff. So that's one of the main reasons why you'll want to do this. And believe me, you can be able to tell the difference between if you've done this step or if you haven't. So let's get started. First, you want to preheat your oven to 325 and we're going to be roasting this in a baking dish for about, you want to do 25 to 30 minutes for each pound. So I want a good medium on this. So I'm going to go ahead and go for an hour and 30 minutes. Now, if you want it rare, I would do an hour. If you want it medium rare, I would do an hour and 15. If you want it medium, an hour and 30. If you want it medium well, I would do an hour and 45. Well done, will be a complete two hours. But you also will be able to tell by pushing down. The more firm it is, when you touch down in the center, if it's squishy like this, it's rare. When it's no bounce back, it's well. You can determine that by touching right here. So this is, see? And this will be well done. So that's medium rare, medium, medium well, and well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and season this. Some grill mate mesquite seasoning. If you ever seen stubs, that's what this is. And we have some Texas prime core seasoning. It has spices, sea salts, dehydrated, dehydrated garlic, dehydrated onion, sugar, some chives in there. Now, if you buy this, it does say here that it has peanuts, tree nuts, and soy and wheat. So please make sure you always look at your ingredients if you're allergic to any of those. Now, the McCormick does not have any of that in there that I believe, let's see, ingredients. Nope, just regular seasoning. It does have sunflower oil, so that's one thing. So just make sure you always look at your ingredients, guys. Now here, what originally what I wanted to use for this recipe is something called Kitchen Bouquet. This is just another variation of it. This is Maggie seasoning. You'll find this in the aisle where the seasonings are. So you might just want to look towards the bottom or the top, but just look for it. It's not going to be like in the middle or anything. But yeah, so it brings out the flavor and basically this just has a brown caramel flavor and it's to give this a nice brown color while it's roasting in the oven. Now with meats, with beef products, steaks, anything like that, I do not put any water on them to wash them off. I just get a damp towel, rub it on there, and then get another paper towel and make sure you pat this completely dry. If you want to wash it, go right ahead. I don't do that because I feel like water gets in there and it just does all kinds of weird things to beef at least pork, chicken, fish, whatever else, go right ahead. But beef, I've never really washed like that. Just pat dry with napkins and a wet paper towel, basically. So let's get to seasoning. The first thing you wanna do is put some of this, I wanna call it kitchen bouquet, but this is, what is this again? Maggie seasoning. I actually know somebody named Maggie, shout out to you though. Anyway, put this all on there. Kinda of smells like soy sauce, anyway. We're gonna flip this over, but first, you just wanna pat that in there real good. Grab some of our spices. 
you want a nice good seasoning on the outside you have to remember we are going to be roasting this so you want all this to try to get inside oh man it already smells good this seasoning is good as you can see in this prime pack we have some chili flakes we have some dry thyme some herbs it's looking good and we're going to do this on each side add some of our mccormick seasoning remember i just have this on a parchment paper you can do this in your baking dish already i just do it on here so i can make a mess here and clean it up later all right now we're going to go to our side and do the same on each side like we did the other I'm not going to add any extra additional salt. Remember, you always want to taste your seasonings that you buy. And these kind of already have some salt in them, so I don't want to over salt this. I will add some black pepper to this though. I have a video that I will be posting in the description box along with the recipe, like always, to explain the different types of roast you can buy you don't always have to buy this kind of roast or if you can't find the eye roast there's different kinds like rump roast sirloin tip all kinds of different ones i have it in the description box the video i made while i was at heb oops i forgot my, my mccormick on this side anyway i'm gonna season this real good it, these seasonings are just amazing as you see, this is the underbelly. That's just like a layer of fat, which is good. You always wanna try to get the steak with the most fat on there for the simple reason is that you're roasting this, baking this for a long period of time. So you wanna make sure that fat drippings is going inside, running down. And remember, we're gonna save our drippings from this from the bottom of the baking dish to make a beef au jus sauce to go along with this. All right, this is looking good already. We're gonna get these ends down. And remember our oven is preheated to 325. And we're gonna put this in our baking dish and get ready to bake. It fits perfectly in my baking dish. Everything is looking beautiful. You can add any aromatics to this as you want. I'm not going to, for me, this is perfect. We're gonna put this in the oven 325 for about an hour and a half i'm gonna check it out an hour but an hour and a half is our set goal so let's get to baking one hour right here we have our thermometer in and it is still at 112 113 right in the middle you always want to put it right in the middle so that is a good close to a little bit above rare rare would be 125 so medium rare will be 130 and i want 135 sorry rare will be 120 Medium rare will be 130, sorry, 125 to 130. Medium will be 130 to 135. So that's what I want. So I'm going to let this go for another 15 minutes and see where we're at then. We're out of the oven. Everything looks delish. We didn't get too many juices, but that's okay. We're still going to make a beautiful au jus because I have a trick for that. Now, you want to always let your roast or even the steak rest so we're gonna let this rest for a good 15 to 20 minutes before we even cut into anything before i remove the strings anything i'm gonna let it rest all right you rest you had a long long day yes you did okay we have the drippings that came from our roast as you can see it wasn't that much but that's fine i have a trick to still get some without all these drippings the drippings just add better flavoring so we still have a good amount in there we're going to add a tiny bit of olive oil just a little bit i'm going to saute some diced onion and some garlic until they're translucent and now that this is nice and heated we're going to add our crushed garlic and some crushed garlic and some onions we want these to get nice and caramelized our temperature is on medium don't worry about this sticking because we are going to deglaze it with a, just a little drop of some red wine. Turn this down a little bit. So just work this about two minutes until it's translucent. 
and then we're going to deglaze the bottom of the pan. Two minutes past past, everything's looking good here. We're going to go ahead and deglaze our bottom just a little. That's perfect. I'm just using some, I'm going to use the cul-de-sac Merlot. All right, you just want to scrape all these bottom. Look how that just keep going. You want to get all these bits and pieces. Get all of this. And then add this to your sauce. And let this cook for a minute. Let the alcohol cook out. Constantly stirring, scraping. with this deglazing process. And you can see, look at that. There's nothing stuck on there now. This wine in the Worcestershire will help it get that good brown color. We're going to let this cook down one minute. We're going to add our beef stock. That will have the beef stock recipe. The link will be in the description. And remember the recipe for this roast will be in the description and along with the au jus. So you guys, I found this bone broth in the grocery store. It says it's good for sipping, soups, and sauces. So I thought this was interesting. So this could be a shortcut you could use instead of making, you know, your own beef broth. So I guess check it out. Okay, we're going to add our beef broth. This is two and a half. Okay. Now that our beef stock is in here, we want to let this come to a boil, bring it down to low, and let it simmer for a good five minutes. Five minutes has passed. I'm gonna go ahead and strain it in this. Go ahead and disregard this. Toss it in the trash, we don't One need it. One teaspoon of flour, and you just wanna whisk this, whisk this in slowly. With your heat on the low, squeeze it down, and allow this to cook for five minutes. Okay, it's had, the roast has been resting. For about 20 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and cut these strings off. And basically, you just wanna go to each and every section, like so. Down. This is hard to do with one hand. Okay, and just unwrap. Slice. See, it has them like this. If you follow the lines from the butcher string, you would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let's say this seven pieces. This looks like a good four ounces. This is six, 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 six. So you get two four ounces and Maybe three, four ounces because this end is kind of small. And you get one, two, three, four, five, six ounces. So let's go ahead and just cut like this. Let's see how we look. Oh, perfect. This is a perfect medium well. Perfect. And it's beautiful. Now remember the end cut is always going to be a little more cooked. Okay, now remember the end cut is always going to be a little more cooked. Now you can do it just like how I did, but I'm going to go ahead and just get little bitty pieces like this, about half an inch. Just like that. Oh man. And if you have a fork, you can use a fork instead of your hand. But for me, this is just way more simpler. Look how, that's just perfect for me. That is perfect. Of course, I would like mine a little more on the rarer side. But my boyfriend doesn't, so this is like a compromise I do. And remember, if you have the same problem I have, you can always just cut a couple of pieces. And the neat trick is 
put a leaf like romaine leaf over it and put it back in the oven and let it bake for a good five minutes and it should you know until your desired doneness is perfect like oh look at that that is beautiful beautiful